that's boys, you can hear what he has to say. His name is Ned's boy, he thinks the world is all over. What up, Net fans? Nets boy here, bring your latest in your somehow they're in the playoffs, Brooklyn Nets news. That's right. Somehow, despite everything that has happened and transpired this season, the Brooklyn Nets are in the postseason and have clinched the sixth seed and will be facing off against the always, always fun matchup, Philadelphia 76ers. So, uh, completely surprised to be honest. I mean, I touched upon on my last Nets Boy episode. I anticipated an epic collapse down the stretch. I anticipated them falling apart. Um, not just after the trades with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, but just towards the end of the season. But the Nets managed to do what they needed to do, which is win two of their last four games, taking care of business against the Pistons and the Magic, and clinched the sixth seed. And yeah, way to go. I, I'm very surprised and very pleased. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I really didn't expect it. I really didn't. You know, I've been so negatively, you know, focused with this team because it's just, it's all they give me that this has been a very pleasant surprise. I mean, the, the, the reality of the situation is, just going to reflect on this real fast before we dive into the 76ers series and that series. Um, the reality is, as negative as I've always been and want to be all the time because it's just easier and more fun to be yelling and screaming, what this Nets team has accomplished after the, you know, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving trade and managing to pretty much reinvent itself on the fly the last 28 games of the season and, the you know, the emergence of Mikel Bridges, which I don't think was coincidental with what Jock Vaughn tries to do with his offense and, Spencer Dinwiddie realizing that it's better if he just passes the ball to everyone else and only shoots when he really, really needs to. And Claxton continuing to development and Cam Johnson coming in and playing well and the versatility on the defensive side with Dorian Finney-Smith and Royce O'Neal. It's impressive. It really is to see what this next team did to, with all these things to happen and for them to hold on to the sixth seed and not even fall into the play-in. It really is impressive, and it really is actually a really great thing to see. And, you know, it's it's definitely <laughs> not where any of us Nets fans wanted them to be come the beginning of the year. Like, I don't think anybody going into the season was saying, oh, well, if the Nets are the sixth seed, we'll be happy. But the reality is, once Kyrie Irving asked for his trade request and then Kevin Durant followed, I think every single... Nets fan will take what has transpired with this Nets team and the fact that they're now officially the sixth seed and have a tough match against the 76ers. It ultimately is a success. It, it really is. When it's under the circumstances, it is a success. Not the beginning of the year, but from what everything that transpired, it is a success. So, all negativity aside, regardless of what happens in the 76ers series, as long as the Nets are competitive, and they don't just get blown out all four games or every game that they play, which would be four games in that case. As long as they're competitive and they, and they push Philadelphia, I think it'll be a successful season under the circumstances of what happened. That being said, let's look into the 76ers matchup because the reality of the situation is the Nets are very, very much so the underdog, as they should be. I mean, I mentioned this before. This Nets team... If they played from the beginning of the season, they probably would be around a 41 to 42 win team instead of 45 like they ended up doing. And they probably would be in the play-in and they would barely, you know, probably be a 7 or 8 seed. So the fact that they're the 6 seed I don't think means anything and the 76ers are clearly the more superior team. I, there is no question about it. Just, I mean, we know this. I think the real question will be, not if the 76ers will win the series, but when will they win the series? I'm mean, just being honest. Like, maybe this is me going back to the negativity, but they, I mean, I don't think there's any 
basketball person that believes the Nets really have a chance. And I, I'm one of them. I don't believe they have a chance at all. I mean, Joel Embiid is probably going to be the MVP, one of the most dominant bigs that we've seen pretty much since, I would say, Shaq, because I don't count Dwight Howard because he's a piece of crap and always will be the most overrated player in the history of basketball. Um, I, I think Joel Embiid is the most dominant and skilled big man we've seen since Shaq. And, uh, you know, he averaged 33 points this season. He's, he's uh, So he's the 30 and 10 guy. And, you know, he's just such a dominant player. And once again, one of the biggest knocks on this Nets team is they don't have size. I know we saw a lot of interesting players coming around, like, uh, what was his name, Raquan Gray, or who got an opportunity in that last irrelevant game of the season against the 76ers when both teams had nothing to play for. So you saw a bunch of schmucks just out there running around like idiots. Um, you know, and uh, Raquan Gray, that's his name, I think. And, you know, we saw Moses Brown or no was that his name i don't even remember like uh, things like that like it's just it's not gonna help the reality is it's not gonna help the size this next team don't that's it um against joel and Bede. i will say this though we have also seen and i didn't really touch upon this in my last episodes the development of dayron sharp to becoming a very serviceable big man I kind of touched upon it before when dayron got a run back when steve nash was still the coach I said he looks a little like he's a little lost out there and that he's not sure his role or what's the best way for him to play when Daron was in the rotation. And I said, I think he should probably go back to the G League, refigure out a niche, figure out how to get play a little bit better with these bigger, stronger bigs and give it another shot. And sure enough, that's kind of what happened. And I think Daron has proven that he can be a serviceable rotational big. And you know what? He's going to be very important in this series because we know Claxton is going to do everything he possibly can to stop Joe Embiid. But as we also know, as great as we Claxton is defensively, he really struggles against bigger, stronger centers. And as we know, there's nothing more dominant than Joel Embiid. So I, we know Claxton's going to struggle. So it's really going to be up to the other bigs. In this case, Dayron Sharp to come in and try to make an impact in this game. Um, in addition to that, the Nets are just going to have to swarm. I mean, the only way I can see the Nets winning a game in this series is if their defense is at an all-time great swarm defense. And what do I mean by that? I mean, you pretty much got everybody on the team, like a swarm of bees, bouncing back and forth between wherever the ball is and the players. Like, it goes to Joel Embiid, there's like four or five guys just swarming on him. He passes out of the double team, the swarm follows that ball. Then they pass it, the swarm follows, and it's just... That's the only way this Nets team could really try to slow down this 76ers team. Now, the good news is the Nets have a personnel to do that. I mean, you think about Royce O'Neal, Dorian Finney-Smith, Mikael Bridges, Nick Claxton. These are really good, versatile defensive players who can swarm and get in the passing lanes. That's the key. I mean, you got to try to slow Joel Embiid down as best you can, which will be very hard to do. I am predicting that Joel Embiid is going to average over 40 points a game in this series. I'm not even joking. The guy averaged 33 for the season. I can't imagine him doing uh, less than 35 to 38 points against his Nets team. He'll probably be more. And you got to do your best to slow him down. But really, the biggest thing this Nets team needs to do, if they want to beat the 76ers, is not necessarily stop Joel Embiid, but stop the other guy. Let Joel Embiid score 40 points. Obviously, you want to try to slow him down. You don't want him to drop 50 or 60, which I bet he's capable of doing against this Nets team. But really, I really think the focus should be more on stopping James Harden, Tyrese Maxey, right? Tobias Harris, Shake, Shake Milton, or whatever his name is. You know, those are the guys that I feel like the Nets really need to focus on stopping the other players, because if you can stop the other players and slow them down, you got a chance to win. Because Joel Embiid's not going to score 100 points. He's not Wilt Chamberlain. So if you can stop the other guys, hold all the other guys to under a combined, say, 40 points, maybe the Nets can pull something out and win a game or two in this series. Because that's the strategy. Hold the other guys to around 40 to 50 points. Let Joel Embiid score 40. 
and then just hope you pull enough off on the offensive end to score 100 points yourself, 110 points, and steal a game. That is what this Nets team needs to do. And the only way they can really do that is with the swarming defense and the switching defense, which I really normally hate. But in this situation, it is the best bet. And don't get frustrated with Joel Embiid. I mean, John Vaughn already pretty much said, you know, the key to this series is to try to limit, throw a bunch of bodies at Joel Embiid, slow him down, limit everybody else, and not fouling Joel Embiid, which is easier said than done. I mean, it's... It's almost impossible. I, 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 the Nets need to play almost a perfect game to beat the 76ers. And that's just to win a game. In a seven-game series, I mean, there, there's no chance. I'm just keeping it 100 here. I, I, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to think of ways it could happen. The only way I really see the Nets somehow miraculously beating the 76ers is, and this is terrible to say, but it really is the only way, is that if Joel Embiid gets hurt. That, that's it. And I'm not wishing for that. You never wish injury on anybody. That's awful. That's wrong. But that's the only way I can see this Nets team somehow upsetting the 76ers. If Joel Embiid sprains his ankle or something, or, or you know, something like that, and he can't play the rest of the series. Kind of like how the Bucks beat the Nets two years ago, or three years ago, whenever that was. Stupid foot on the line. Changed everything. Um, anyway, um, that that's really the only way I can see this Nets team winning. And even if that did happen, it's still not a guarantee because the 76ers still have James, the, the three steps Harden, who I still hate with a passion but can't deny the fact that he's a very good player. Tobias Harris, Tyrese Maxey. They still have other players. And uh, so the reality is, unless it's a perfect performance by the Nets, 76 is win. So that being said, what is my prediction for the series? I am going to say Sixers and five. I am going to give the Nets one game where they will outplay the 76ers. In the regular season, they didn't win a game. They got swept. But we all know, first of all, we know the last game of the year was a complete irrelevant game because like I said earlier, it was the schmucks against the schmucks. Because it didn't matter. Um, you know, no one of any importance for either team played. Unless you count Mikel Bridges starting the game and leaving after 10 seconds just so he can keep his Iron Man streak alive and his consecutive game streak alive, which is silly, but I understand why the Nets did it. Um, you know, and then the other games, if you remember, the Nets were in a lot of those games. Well, they had a one terrible loss where the 76ers were resting their players and they beat the Nets. But then the next time they played them was the game where Spencer Dinwiddie had the game tying uh, shot that he made, but it ended up being about a, like a split second too late. And the Nets lost by three. And so if you look at it, the Nets have always been competitive with the 76ers. So I do believe the Nets can steal one game, whether it's one of the first two games in Philadelphia, like they did four years ago, or five years ago, whenever it was, when they first played the 76ers, I think 2019, so four years ago. Remember, very similar situation. Actually, almost exact. The Nets were the sixth seed, the 76ers were the three seed, and the Nets came out and in game one just punched the 76ers in the face. I don't know if you remember this. It was a gr every, Everything was just perfect. Karis LeVert played great. Um, uh, D'Angelo Russell played great. Jared Allen would play fantastic. You know, Dinwiddie was good. To, everyone was just, everyone just fell into place, and the Nets just punched the 76ers in game one, and I believe won by, like, 15, 16 points. And then the 76ers remembered that they were 10 times better than the Nets and won the next four games and beat the Nets in five. So is it going to be exactly like that? I don't think so, but I do think it's going to be very similar. Maybe the Nets steal one out of two in Philadelphia. Maybe the Nets win game three. But the reality is this is going to probably be a five-game series. Six games at the best. That is like the ceiling for the Nets is to win two games in the series. That, and that is a long shot ceiling. That's once again if the Nets really figured everything out. I mean, I'm just being honest. I just don't see this team doing better than that. So at the end of the day, if the Nets 
winning at least one game in this series and losing five, I'll be very pleased as long as they're in every game. If they get swept, I won't be happy, but I'll be content as long as they were all competitive games. If they get blown out by it in every game, I'll be mad and I'll be like saying what a disaster of a team. Um, I'm sure there's going to be at least one blowout because, once again, the talent level is so different. But we'll see what happens. Um, I, I will say this. I actually do think this current Nets team is better than the 2019 team when they were the sixth seed. I just think that, you know, the team is a little bit more, uh, you know, balanced defensively. And Mikael Bridges is a legitimate go-to score at this point. So I would argue that this team is better, but I would also argue that this 76ers team is better as well than the 19 team. So it's kind of the same situation. So that's it. I'll wrap up this episode. That's what I think with the series. Let me know what you guys think about everything. Let me know what you guys think about, you know, uh, the this playoff matchup against the 76ers. If you agree with me, five games, 76ers and five. Maybe the Nets can win one or two games, two at the most. Um, if you have any faith that somehow something crazy is going to happen, the Nets are going to shock the world and beat the 76ers in advance, which <laughs> you're delusional. Um, let me know about everything. Um, my next Nets play episode will probably be after game two. I'm usually pretty consistent come playoff time of doing a game every, I mean, a, a, an episode every <laughs> two games. Um, and hopefully the next episode, maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. I'll be like, oh, look, the Nets stole a game. It's 1-1. But most likely I'm going to be like, oh, the Nets are down 2-0, and it's going to be like a must-win game three. But we'll see. Let me know what you guys think about everything. And until then, this is Nets, boy. Getting ready for the playoffs, which start this Saturday, by the way. I don't know if I, I didn't mention that. And signing off.